Welcome back to the channel, this is Annie Nguyen and today we're going to talk about the Wave 88. It has a dumb font, but it's plateless and the topping experience is jiggly. Sorry, it, I don't know why I wiggle like a, the fat boy from that one movie. Today, all the viewers are just going to have to accept that. I have a heavy bias. I love this type of keyboard. Out of all the mounting styles, top mount, gasket mount, sandwich mount, gummy o-ring mount, my favorite mount is actually the plateless. It's like a plateless PCB mount, gasket mount. Those are a lot of words, but what it really means is there's no plate for the switches to sit into. The switches sit directly into the PCB and the PCB itself is what's getting sandwiched into the case. All you gotta know is the typing experience is very bouncy, very fun, and it's gonna be quite different from what you're probably used to. And if you're new here, my name is Andy Nguyen. I make content on keyboards and tech. And I'm just a nerd just like you all. The Wave 88 right here is made by Oasis Industries and they are related a little bit to our lab. So you can see a little bit of the design influence here, but they are different designers. Basically, I love the Juby, which is 60% XT. So it had some macro columns. I love the new, that was a regular 60% playlist. I actually love the IDB 60 that I used way back then, which is also playlist. And now we have something that's in the TKL form factor. We we also have the Glacier, which I also tried Playlist, which had a lot of similarity with this board, except this one has a different weight. And I know the weight looks kind of ugly, but it's one of the few things I dislike about it. There's a lot to love here, let's get into it. They did sponsor the stream in the video, but you know, this one's gonna tickle my fancy because it's one of my favorite types of mounts. Keep that in mind. My opinion is always my own, they never get to see the video before it goes live. So like I mentioned before, it's Playlist, let's get right into that. So it's PCB mounted and it uses these gasket socks, just like the Jelly Epoch, as well as the Mr. Suit by Owl Lab. So there's nothing new here. It makes it really easy to install, and it's a non-permanent installation, so if you mess up, you can just reapply the sock. Whereas with the gasket, if you mess up and you pull off the adhesive, it ends up stretching the poron, and it's uh, not a good time. And being plateless, it means the plate is optional. It came with a PC plate, but I'm not gonna use it because if I have a plateless option, why would I use a plate? The 7V is like this as well, and in my experience, the 7V sounded better plateless than it did with a plate. Here, I'm not even gonna try the plate because you know I love the plateless. With it being plateless, it was bouncy and jiggly like the Thera 75, but I will say the Thera 75 was more bouncy, almost uncontrollably bouncy. In this configuration, it's okay. It's actually easy to bottom out, so if you're concerned about that, it is kind of a problem here. The PCB is not much thinner than usual. It's 1.5 millimeters. Typically, PCBs are 1.6 millimeters, so I don't feel like it's any more flexible due to the thickness of the PCB, but it has a crazy amount of flex cuts and that's gonna change the typing experience pretty immensely. If you know, I like to do half plates on a lot of my builds, but if the PCB doesn't have many flex cuts, the half plate isn't gonna be doing much. You're gonna be typing into the PCB, which is gonna be a different experience, but it's not gonna deflect as much unless it has flex cuts like here. Instead of having horizontal flex cuts, this has little quadrants of flex cuts, allowing it to flex a lot more individually everywhere you press, rather than just having each row to press. And whether or not you're gonna notice that, it's gonna be up to you, but I do find that it's very bouncy here. I find that it's pretty rigid in the middle, but is more flexible on the edges. Just a minor nitpicky thing that I noticed. Overall, the TKL form factor is pretty standard. It does have wind keyless. So you see aluminum here and aluminum here. It has F13, which I have an Kiwi there. And those are things that a lot of people want in their TKL keyboards. Rather than just having a 6.25U ANSI bottom with four right mods and three left mods, this one looks a little bit fancier. The F13 is usually just for an artisan. You don't really need an F13 key because it doesn't really do anything but you can map it to a special key if you want using VIA. With the plateless mount, the sound is very plateless. Plateless, because of all the flex, typically does not sound as loud. The new was an exception. It was a very, very loud board, but the Juby was quieter, the Thera 75 was quieter, the 7V was quieter without the plate, and so is the Wave 88. It has a kind of pop sound to it, but it's not as loud and sharp to the ears. It's very pleasing to listen to. And that was the sound test with its hot swap. Here's the sound test with its soldered. In regards to the usability, 
when I built this on stream, I actually thought the hot swap was feasible using the Oil King switches. The five pins were very fat and were held tightly into the PCB. And enough. But the left bracket, right bracket, and question mark, those were not aligned. I had originally thought it was due to the hot swap because typically hot swap is a little bit more wobbly because there's no plate holding it in place. But I was a bit confused because the switches sat pretty tightly. So I figured, oh, I don't recommend hot swap plateless because although it fits and the switches aren't coming out, it's not lined up. Then I built it soldered. I did this off stream. I just did it right before filming this video and I noticed something odd. The holes are not lined up. So the, the keycap and the switch were not misaligned due to being hot swap and not having a plate, but rather the PCB itself is a little bit faulty. Just off axis a little bit, enough for you to notice it in the keycap itself and enough to trigger your OCD. Oh, I really wanted to love this, but I'm going to be staring at it all the time. I'm staring at it right now. This key right here, right, right there. Right there. Look at it. Look at it. That was after I fixed it. When I fix, when I say fix it, I mean reflowing it and kind of just lifting one side up a little bit so that it kind of lines itself up. This is just a manufacturing issue for a prototype. And I will be reporting this back to Oasis so that they don't have this in the production run. Other than all that, for some reason, you're actually able to use hot swap plateless if the switch is tight enough. And though there's a few boards that tout that they can do hot swap plateless, but it's really gonna depend on your switch. Switch is not standard. Some are fatter than others. And if they're fat, they can fit better into the PCB. And if they're loose, you can't really do anything about it. I don't recommend hot swap plateless, but you can try it if you want. But if your switches are just flying out, don't do it. Overall, I really like this board because it's a TKL. I typically prefer 60%, but I've been playing a lot of Lost Ark and I need the F keys to be able to hit my potions and use my skills. And I can't really do that quickly without mispressing on it using a 60%. With a 60%, if I have to hit F1, it's very close to escape and it's really messing me up. So having a TKL on hand is really useful, especially if you want to do work as well. It's nice to have page up, page down, home and end to dedicated keys rather than having it layered just because it's annoying and I just don't want to have to layer too much when I'm trying to be productive. Like right after filming, I'm going to have to edit this video and have the choice. I'm going to go grab a TKL around the 6%. And you may ask, Andy, why don't you use a 75% keyboard like the Satisfaction 75 or the Hex 4B over a TKL? I just think TKLs look prettier. They look more keyboardy and that's just my personal preference and the Satisfaction 75 sounds bad. So I would prefer to use this, especially because I like plateless and I already got rid of my Juby and my new. So this is one of my only plateless boards left. and the Hex 4B, but this look, this, this definitely looks prettier than the kind of buck tooth Hex 4B. So they told me that this keyboard is going to be $399, and that's a pretty fair price considering the FBTKL pre-order in stock is going to be close to $300, I believe. For another $100, you can get a brass weight. You can get this badge, which I like to call the worm. It's W for wave, but it looks like a worm. Pretty heavy board, pretty solid in the hand. And in terms of sound, I got to mention that it was hollow before I did the force break mod. And that's because I'm not using PCB foam. I'm not using case foam. I really don't like to use those foams. Here, no case foam, no PCB foam, force break, and it sounds great. I do prefer the sound of the spacebar of other plateless boards, but I think this is pretty good for what it is. And $399 is before shipping, and it's gonna be shipping from China, so the shipping's gonna hurt. I don't know how else to tell you that. I would expect it to be closer to 450, 460, depending on where you are. Because there's not a lot of plateless options on the market, you have the Thera 75 GB that already finished, the 7V that may be coming back, uh, the IDB 60 is old and it's not coming back, you have the new. So there's a few things, but I think the package for 399 plus shipping is pretty solid. Considering there's not a lot of plateless options on the market, gasket's pretty popular, top mount's coming back, but not a lot of PCB mount gasket. So it's there. It's not too expensive. There are more expensive TKLs out there. I think the price is pretty fair here. Plateless is definitely my preferred mounting option, even over gummy o-ring. Although I love my unicorn, I like the typing experience of plateless better. But I will say, if plateless is your only board, let's say you'll have one keyboard, the jiggly typing experience may get tiring for you. So I would implore you to at least have one regular mount, like a top mount or just a regular plate gasket mount.
so that you can kind of switch off. The playlist jiggly tapping experience is not for everyone. It's just my personal preference. And that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching. All hail the worm board. Peace.